Alexa, turn on studio lights. Alexa, turn on studio lights. Alexa. In this video, I am going to tell you all about how my anxiety made me a prisoner in my own flat and more importantly, how I combated it. My name's Ian Wills and welcome to The In Crowd. Hello and welcome to this week's personal video, that time when I take you on an often scary trip down the dark corridors of my mind. And today I'm going to talk about how I nearly became a hermit in my own flat because of my anxiety. Please remember if you've liked this or any other video, then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing to the channel every little bit really does help and pro provide me with that extra push to make more videos and if you would like to provide some extra support if you know what i mean then you can be a patron of the channel just by clicking on the link down below and giving uh, as a small amount as a dollar a month just to let you know i'm trying to increase what you get for being a patron currently you get to see my bloopers bloomers no not bloomers bloopers and uh, on that on patreon and also in the future some behind the scenes viewing now as ever i'm going to try to do this in one take to try to keep the momentum up of the video um anxiety for me is like a raging battle or war on one side there is my cool rational brain calculating and very defined and on the other side there's this mad chaotic and completely irrational mind or body and the two are in constant conflict um, with each other in quite a few situations if you look at it in the wider possible sense my rational brain is in control like now and i'm cool collected smart whatever however there are times that the rational brain or my rational brain completely loses control and something takes over my body and then eventually my mind now i'm not too sure where or when my anxiety actually started and it probably started off quite small and grew bigger and bigger and bigger until before I knew it, it was something quite absolutely massive. Now, there are some things which I remember doing when I was in my early 20s, which I could never do now. And looking back on it, I really do think, how in heaven's name did I do that? And I couldn't even face doing it now, um, even though I'm several years into my recovery or improvement. I still do look back on certain periods of my life when it just seems to be a black gap with no memories. I remember um, episodes, but have no idea how or where they fit. This could be because of anxiety or it could be just because I'm getting old, probably the latter. Now, as I become more and more and more anxious um, back in the day, I started to retire more and more and more to my flat. I would get anxious even if I was about to leave the flat or I had to go somewhere the next day. And having to go out in public really did raise my anxiety levels to terrific levels. Whether or not this was going for a walk, walking somewhere, going to the shops, anything leaving my door, my flat through that door would set it off. And you might be thinking, well, what was it that was actually scaring you? And it wasn't um, 
open spaces. It wasn't that. It was the fact that I felt that people were looking at me or laughing at me or even wanted to attack me or do harm to me. I felt as if there was a dangerous world out there and it was a world that I shouldn't be putting myself into, a world of ridicule and judgment. And it would be a lot safer just to stay in my flat, keep the door locked and just avoid that contact at all. As you can imagine, my self-confidence, my self-esteem were at rock bottom. And to be completely honest with you, and I think it's important to be honest with you, there were very many times that I would just curl up in a tight ball or go and sit crouched in a dark room, especially when the anxiety was massively high and just want the world just to pass me by and it was a very dark place. Now, although I had probably given up on myself, my psychologist hadn't. And he was a very, very well-trained and persuasive person. And he knew that I needed to get, he needed to get me back outside into the world and started to face these anxious times these situations that brought on my anxiety i had to face them and deal with them and he was very good at setting various targets and various tasks for me to do on a complete side note at this point i have to say that even though i was in my 30s i had to take the first time i had to go i had to my mom had to go with me and bless her she i probably put her through hell during those days but she was always willing to put herself out to help me go places um, and if she hadn't come to it i don't think i would have ever got there so you might be in a situation when you're not wanted to go outside you might be watching youtube videos you might have come across this one and i'm not an expert but i wanted to share with you how I managed to get over that barrier of actually going outside. So first things first, and this is the most important thing I think about tackling anxiety. I wanted to change. I, I, I needed to get back into control and I, I, I didn't want to, but I felt I had to challenge myself and this was really important for me and looking back i don't know where i found the strength from or where it came from but somehow i found the the, the confidence or the persuasiveness to actually what that willingness to change and put myself into these situations and if i hadn't have found that i know and uh, looking back that i would definitely still be in the corner curled up at this time now i i'm not too sure how i found that strength but i did and i started to fulfill the task the um, psychologist gave me second once i started to go on a road of recovery i never gave up i really fought and fought and I probably looking back I put myself through hell I, I know I did but and I remember the number of times one thing that I used to do is that I used to try to leave the flat take two steps away from the door and then my brain would say something like you left the kettle on this is on you need to go back and I would go back and then say no silly let's go let's go go back go out go back and sometimes just to, it would take me up to 10 15 minutes just going backwards and forwards i have no idea what other people thought and that probably increased the anxiety level um tremendously but i didn't give up on it i just kept i thought i am going to do this task no matter what the, the other thing that I always try to do and I still do it now and I still have episodes that I find very difficult to leave the flat but positive thoughts always helped me and to start off with I used to sing 
and I have this song it's uh, it sounds dreadful um, but I have this song um, from the sound of music that I have confidence in sunshine and I used to sing this in my head I remember when they were trying to figure out whether or not there was anything medically wrong with me I went and had an uh, MRI scan to see whether or not there was any issues anywhere and I remember sat in that enclosed space which I hated having to sit still and all I was singing in my head was I have confidence in sunshine I have over and over and over again um, and now I tend to wear headphones so if I feel anxious as I leave or it sets my IBS off or whatever I try to put my headphones in and listen or sing along to something to take my mind off it and I'm a strong believer is that if I can distract my mind it doesn't concentrate on these negative thoughts and these anxious thoughts it thinks about something else and I, I think that's that's really really important the final thing that I would say is that and I still need to work on this big time even if something went wrong I try to um, concentrate on the positive focus on the positive and this was something that the psychologist really worked with me a long time with in the sense that if I was just out of the flat for five minutes instead of saying it was only five minutes he would say it was five minutes and that was really important and it was just sort of like yeah don't say only you managed it for five minutes so next time let's go for six so forth and so on now I always look back at that time and I'm impressed how far I have actually come during that time and I'm still really I've still got a way to go I know that and I often have this longing to feel normal for want of a better word but I know I've always got to fight this and keep going forward I can leave the flat now I can go for a walk but I still have that nagging voice in the back of my head saying stay inside it's safer inside stay inside it's safer inside and I still look around as I'm walking there, there, I will be walking to work and I will see somebody approaching me and I'll be like a frightened rabbit in headlights I remember actually the first time I had to do a task and I had to walk from A to B and my head's down I'm focusing and I'm walking like anything and I remember this person from across the road walked across to me and oh my giddy I was I, I was sweating I was panicking and I thought he's not going to talk to me he's not going to talk to me and he came up to me and he says do you have a light and I honestly I, I think I just said no like this and then just like walked kept going and he must have thought I was some kind of maniac anyway I still think people around me are looking at me um, judging me and probably even laughing at me and that is something that I still have to try to work on I'm my self-esteem and confidence is probably always quite low um, you probably won't think it when I'm streaming or things or doing these videos but I this is a show and I I that's how I sort of like overcome that worry I and I do hope that making these videos hearing your replies and streaming is helping me it's helping me to de develop develop that confidence and not not take everything so personally and so critically and even when I first started to stream if somebody came into the chat and said something that was negative as you can imagine I get a lot of negatives then I used to try to I, well I used to panic and sweat and have to stop the stream but now I try to push my way through it and think of all the positive things that people have said and all the support that people give me and the hopefully the all the the joy that I bring to people and that 
that is something that I I would say to you all. You know, you know, always focus on the positive. You know, not on the negative. So yeah let let me finish on a positive so now i walk to and from work every day um so it's about 30 minutes either way which is a huge improvement for me some days are more difficult than others and i have to admit some days i succumb and i might take the car but those times are becoming fewer and fewer and, and far and farther uh, apart from each other it didn't happen overnight and I've worked hard with it and I continue to work hard with it and I can even now go for a walk just for the sake of going for a walk I after lunch when I'm on leave I'll go for a walk and a set route and walk around and get back with my headphones in playing um, so if you are at that stage then that you're trying to push through this anxiety trying to move forward then I would really say to you have confidence in your ability have confidence in yourself because you can do it there's something inside you that it sounds like a rec uh, song there's something inside you so strong but there is and all you've got to do is tap into that stay positive and push yourself every single day because it's only by doing that that you will improve it's not easy I know it's not easy however the rewards are huge and as I continue on my journey to improve confidence improve my frame of mind to ensure that my anxiety is um, kept under control I constantly remind myself about those things so I hope this has been helpful for you and just smile have fun and if you are in that position of fighting anxiety then stay strong and keep trying I'll catch you all later see ya bye